Okay, now that we've spent some time reviewing the different types of costs, uh, it's appropriate to look at how we can actually analyze cost behavior to determine what it's going to do. And we have four commonly used methods to analyze cost behavior. The first one is called account analysis. Then we can use something called scatter plots, the high-low method, or regression analysis. So the order of these methods right now is going to go from least accurate all the way down to most accurate. So under account analysis, managers just need to figure out how their costs behave before they can make any predictions or good business decisions. So when performing account analysis, managers are using their judgment to classify each general ledger account as either variable, fixed, or mixed. So the amount of judgment can cause some issues because the analysis is not based entirely on facts. So they're just being quite subjective in making a determination, making an educated guess. Now, scatter plots are histor use historical data to determine a cost behavior. So a scatter plot is going to be a graph of the historical data on the y-axis and volume data and on the x-axis. So the resulting graph will help managers visually determine the strength of the relationship between the cost and the volume of the chosen activity base. So remember that plotting points of cost and volume visually expresses the cost relationship. This is not always a straight line. The plotting of data helps determine whether the cost is accurately classified as a variable fixed or mixed. So here's an example. This is a visual example of a scatter plot. And um, the graph of cost is on the y-axis and volume is on the x-axis, which is the starting point for determining the cost behavior. If there's no fairly strong relationship between the cost and volume, the data points will fall in a linear I'm sorry, if there is a fairly strong relationship between cost and volume, the data points will fall in a linear pattern, meaning they will resemble something close to a straight line, which is pretty much what we have here in this particular example. However, if there's no relationship between cost and volume, then the data points will appear almost random. So we might get some up here, we might get some way over here. Um, and so when you're studying a scatter plot, you want to fit a line to the data with half of the points falling above and half of the data points falling below the line. The, slo the line slope is going to be equal to the variable cost per unit and where it intercepts at the y-axis indicates total fixed cost. So where over here it actually intercepts will be our fixed cost. If the data points suggest a fairly weak relationship between the cost and the volume of the chosen activity, any cost equation based on that data will not be very useful in predicting future costs. So scatter plots are useful because they allow managers to identify outliers or abnormal data points. So again, if we got a point over here or a point over here, these are all way out of line with what the um, line looks like. So if they don't fall in the same general pattern as the other data points, then a manager might see a potential outlier in the data and he or she should first determine whether the data is correct. Maybe there was a clerical error that gave them that outlier. Now scatter points, I'm sorry, scatter plots do have a few disadvantages. They're subjective when we're analyzing the nature of the scatter plot and trying to fit a line to the data. So interpreting where the line crosses the y-axis and the calculation of the slope can all vary depending on the individual performing the analysis. Now the next uh, method of analysis we can use is something called the high-low method. Now it's an easy way to estimate the variable and fixed cost components of a mixed cost and there are three steps involved in the high-low method. The first step is that we need to find the variable cost per unit or the slope of the line. And then step two we need to find the fixed cost which is our ver vertical intercept. And in step three, we need to create the cost equation. So um, one major drawback of the high-low method is that it's only going to use two data points, which are the highest and the lowest. And because we're ignoring every other month, the line might not be very representative of those months. So despite this drawback, though, the high-low method, it's quick and easy to use, and it's more precise and objective than using, say, scatter plots. So the high-low method is going to be used to determine the fixed and variable components of a semi-variable cost or a mixed cost. So total costs 
are going to be equal to our fixed costs plus our variable costs. Now remember, variable costs are, are our variable act, uh, rate per unit of activity multiplied times the actual number of units of activity. So here's an example. We have Beetle Company and they recorded their high and low activity levels in cost and the number of units for production and maintenance cost for two months. So using these two levels of activity, we can compute the variable cost per unit, the fixed cost, and then express the cost in the form of y equals a plus bx. I just wanted to pause here and mention in earlier videos I've mentioned the, an equation of y equals vx plus f. Um, this particular textbook that I'm using uses this formula. Other textbooks have used this form formula. This is the more generic formula for uh, a line. So y equals vx plus f is your variable cost times the number of units of activity plus the fixed cost. And this is exactly the same thing. Your fixed costs are your a the variable cost will be B and the units of activity level or level of activity will be X. So keep that in mind. Okay, so then we need to calculate the change in cost and the change in units from the high to low levels of activity. So um, actually these wouldn't normally be negatives. They put them in here to illustrate to you that we take the high level of activity in this case 9,000 units and we subtract the low level which will be 5,000 and the difference between those two will become our change in units which is our denominator of 4,000 and we will do the same thing at cost so we look at the cost associated with the high level of activity end up subtracting the cost of the low level of activity which gives us a, a difference of 3,600 and that will be our numerator 3,600 divided by 4,000 units that gives us a variable unit cost of 90 cents per unit. Okay, so now that we know that our cost per unit, variable cost per unit is 90 cents, we can go ahead and determine the equation. So fixed costs are going to be equal to total cost minus total variable cost. Um, a minute ago we had total cost equals fixed cost minus total variable, so we've just reshuffled this around a bit. And we know that the total cost is 9700 because that was given to us. And we know that we produced, or at the highest level of activity, we had 9,000 units, and the variable cost per unit is 90 cents. So we plug those in. That gives us total cost minus our total variable cost of 8100 is $1,600. So our fixed component is $1,600. Now we can rewrite that in our equation. So if we're using the y equals a plus bx, it's y equals 1600, that was our fixed cost, plus 90 cent variable cost per unit times the level of activity. Now if we were using the formula um, from the particular textbook that I've been using, it's y equals vx plus f, so we would just re rewrite this. So it's y is going to be equal to 90 cents x, variable cost per unit times x, uh, I should put in here plus uh, sixteen hundred dollars which is F or your fixed cost. Okay so um, the very last way we can conduct some cost behavior analysis is through regression analysis. And regression analysis is a statistical procedure for determining the line and cost equation that best fits the data by using all of the data points, not just the high volume and the low volume data points. It's more accurate than the high-low method and is referred to as the line of best fits. So a statistic called the R-square, which you see here, it generated by regression analysis also tells us how well the line fits the data points and may be known as goodness of uh, fit statistic. So regression analysis is tedious to complete by hand, but it's quite simple to do using Excel. So I've got a, an example of an Excel output generation here when performing regression analysis. So there are three pieces of information that we need for regression analysis. The first one is the intercept coefficient. 
then we need the x variable 1 coefficient and the r square value. So the intercept coefficient represents the variable, I'm sorry, the fixed cost component of the mixed cost. So this is the where the line intersects the y axis. So if you see here, we've got the intercept right here, and it's shown as $14,538.05. This is our fixed cost. Then we've got the x variable 1 coefficient, which is the line slope, or the variable cost per unit. So you can see that highlighted here is $7 and roughly 85 cents. And then I mentioned earlier the R square value, which is the goodness of fit statistic. So it's um, showing at 0.94726. So this R square provides managers with very helpful information. The higher the R square, the stronger the relationship between cost and volume. If there were a perfect relationship between the number of guests and the hotel's utility cost, a perfectly straight line would run through every data point and the R square would be 1. Now the stronger the relationship, the more confidence the manager would have in using the cost equation to predict costs at different volumes within the same relevant range. So using the Excel output in the slide, we arrive at a cost equation here highlighted in green of y equals 785x plus $14,538. Remember that our variable cost per unit here is the x variable one coefficient or our variable cost per unit. X will be the number of, or the level of activity and then the 14,538 was our Y intercept or our fixed cost. So the goodness of fit is a characteristic of the line described by the data points in the regression analysis. The R square value ranges anywhere from 0 to 1 with 0 being no relationship between cost and volume meaning the activity is not a cost driver, and one describing a perfect relationship where activity is a cost driver. So as a rule of thumb, an R square over 0 0.8, 0 0.8, generally indicates the cost equation is very reliable for predicting costs at other volumes within a relevant range. An R square between 0 0.5 and 0 0.8 means that managers should use the cost equation with caution. However, if the R square is fairly low, let's say less than 0.5, the manager should try using a different activity base for the cost analysis because the current measure of volume is only weakly related to the cost. And one last comment here, cost equations are only as good as the data for which they are based. So there might be seasonal variations which might justify development of a cost equation for each season. Inflation can also um, have predictions and may require an inflation adjustment which be made to the cost equation in periods of changing inflation rates. Abnormal data points or outliers, which you can see as an example here, can distort the results of the high-low method and regression analysis. So if either point on the high-low method is an outlier, the resulting uh, cost equation will be skewed.